We're continuing our back to school coverage this week all across Central Arkansas this morning. Dr. Tony Thurmans, the superintendent of Cabot Public Schools, is with us here this morning. I do want to talk about the phase in reopening that you're going to be having in Cabot. But first, I do want to kind of talk about the, we'll get back to that. But first, Dr. Thurman, I want to talk about the virtual students and those that will be in classroom. What is your breakdown, like the numbers, the percentages, how many students are, and their families are opting to stay home versus those coming to class? We were expected to open with around 10,500 students, and that's in K-12, not concluding our pre-K students. But right now, we're around about 16 to 1,700 students that have chosen to go totally digital for the upcoming school year. Did y'all have? Did y'all cap the number of students that you were going to basically allow to be on campus, or was it just whatever you wanted to do, whatever you're comfortable with, you could do it? Well, we have not set a cap. In fact, we had a deadline. And then we had a new deadline, uh -huh. and we've had a new deadline. I see how and, it goes. And my point in that is, we've just tried to make it work for parents. We know that they're going back and forth, and there's so much information out there right now. So we're trying to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Our challenge right now is that we're ready to open school on Monday. So we've had to slow down with making changes just to get those kids in school or get them started in CPDA. And then those parents, if they decide they want to make a switch, we're still going to work with them. Basically, we're going to put them where they want to be. Ultimately, it just may take a few days to make that happen. At so this it's, point. it's going to be constantly an evolving process. It's everything has been since March. Everything constantly changes, and it's I guess it's a matter of being flexible. Uh, so what what kind of step measures are y'all taking? Going to be taking on a daily basis to ensure students and faculty and staff member safety. So first and foremost, it's going to be just pushing out the social media, the, the social distancing aspect. And, and one of the things that we're sharing today with our parents is the fact that a lot of the social distancing, especially at our secondary schools, is going to be this personal responsibility, mm -hmm. just making sure that you're staying away from crowds. And kids are just like adults. We're naturally social. We want to be around right. each other. But they're going to have to take some personal responsibility for this because we can remind, we can we can um, uh, push people and and. and, and try to get them to understand the importance of this. But ultimately, we've got to have everybody working together on this. Of course, the face coverings are a big deal. We're going to do that K-12. We've made modifications to all of our schedules. We've made mm -hmm. modifications to our classroom configurations. So just what you're hearing in other school districts is happening in Cabot as well. All right, so let's talk about that phase in reopening. You're going to have like, what, half the students on Monday, and the other half come on Tuesday. Is that right? Yes, sir. Half on Monday, half on Tuesday. Rationale real quick is that smaller groups, we have a lot of routines that just as I mentioned to get into um, to get into effect. And we thought we'd do that in smaller groups mm -hmm. and really work with those students to make sure they understand just some of the changes that have been made and also to give our teachers a chance to meet our kids, kind of learn our kids real quick. Um, also, new Chromebooks, try to have some orientation on those in smaller groups. Another huge advantage of this is to help parents with car loading, unloading. You know, believe it or not, car lines are, are a headache. Oh, and, first uh, week of school? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes, and, and people line up at, start lining up at noon. You right. know, so what we're going to try to do is kind of break that in half and get parents used to the system. And also for transportation, it's always a challenge for every school district. So putting the half the kids on the buses the first day and the second day, it'll actually help a lot with that, too, to get our route stabilized. Mm -hmm. All right, so y'all did have an open house last night in the school district. How did that go? Actually, much better than I thought. Um, uh, we had great feedback across the district and probably one of our biggest open houses ever in terms of percentage attendance. I think a lot of parents just wanted to come see exactly what school was going to look like. Mm -hmm. So the attendance was good. Attitudes were good. It was very positive. And uh, I think that was really getting us over the hump. We just needed to finally have kids and, and parents back in our buildings because so, they've not been there since March. Right. So that was exciting for everyone. Maybe a little sense of normalcy, something that all of us probably want to see a whole lot more of. Dr. Yes. Thurman, thanks and thank you for taking the time for us this morning. Good luck next week.